Hello to everyone, this is Greg Parkani from Inland Academy with this year's second episode of the InFocus webinar series. Today I'm going to talk to you about traceability browser, configuration options, filters, suspected links, sharing and much more. There's a lot to cover, so let's get started. Like before, we're using the training.codemer.com server. Register for free, click the available to join training project and you're good to go. Useful content will be shared in the document management of this one as well. Codebeamer offers you gapless end-to-end -end traceability of the development process from customer requirements to source code. This requires a configuration to be in place where the relevant trackers are connected via references. This then allows you to establish connections on the work item level. There are no two customers with identical project configuration and so the traceability browser must be flexible enough to accommodate the unique differences. There are two methods to find the traceability browser. Option A is to head to the tracker overview and hit the second icon at the top, to the right of the tracker configuration. It's the icon showing a square with four sections, with one section highlighted and sort of elevated. The description will show if you hover your cursor over it. As it opens, you can read a brief description of the tool and start building your traceability from scratch or open a preset. The other method is via requirement trackers. Let me open up the customer requirement specifications tracker and hit the traceability icon in the view selector in the top right corner. The initial filter is now set to the one I opened it from. Let's head back to the tracker overview and look at the configuration diagram. As you can see, customer requirement is connected to system requirement with a reference and similarly test cases are connected to system requirements. The arrow is always going from the downstream item and points at the upstream one. So when we're building a traceability browser view, it's a good idea to start from custom requirements, then add system requirements in the second column and test cases in the third. If we were to add test cases in the second, it would come up empty as there are no test cases directly referencing customers. And I can tell you that just by looking at the configuration diagram. Test runs would be a great choice after test case as they are connected with the reference. There's also a configuration that has to be done by the system administrator. Maximum number of items on the first and subsequent levels, maximum number of test runs, etc. You can see the power of the tool if you look at the absolute maximum of 100,000 records on each level. That's a lot of data right there. Of course, it makes sense to limit this for better performance. And it also is reasonable, as high record counts are often a sign of missing filters, so the user will rerun anyway after realizing their mistake. For the browser to display anything, references and or associations have to be in place on the work item level. For instance, notice how the customer requirement chassis has three downstream references on the side. To top it up, it also has an association with a bug, meaning the bug is somehow connected to the customer requirement this time, but it's not a normal expected phenomenon in the project lifecycle. As the initial filter, we have customer requirement specifications in. On level one, we have system requirements. And since these two are typically connected via reference, we can remove the checkboxes from the associations. I'm also removing the folders so I can focus on the work item relations. In the field settings, you can display additional ones like the submitted by or submitted at. Then I'm going to use the cone or filter icon to filter for items submitted by not me. I'm going to remove the filters and add test cases to level two. Then proceed with test runs on level three. Adding test runs will require you to add a release or build filter to limit the number of records retrieved. Let's display the runs from the test and definition releases. You can see how the vehicle emission case has a test run in the above releases. I deliberately said one, even though there are two rows displayed. Let's look at the reason. The way we store test runs in CodeBeamer is like this. For each test run, there is one parent, and then one child for each test case and parameter combination. For instance, if there are four cases in a test run with three parameter values each, that will result in 12 children and one parent and you will see 13 rows in this section of the traceability browser. Notice how the test runs tracker by default 
displays parent runs only, with a parent empty filter in place. The two records here are both parent runs. As I click on one of them, I get a nice overview with a pie chart and more details at the bottom of the screen. It gives me summarized information of the child test runs. As a rule of thumb, it's a good idea to make the browser look like the test run tracker by default. I go to the last level and add a filter for parent empty. Go again, no more double names, just nice clickable parent runs with pie charts. First, let me select the load manage presets link in the top left corner. Specify a descriptive name and describe which roles I want to share it with. Access rights can be read or write. I don't want you guys to make modifications to this one. You can always save as to create your own view. I hit save. The new view is now available under the load manage presets menu. You can also generate a shareable link by clicking the icon in the top right corner. Once you have it, feel free to drop it into any meeting software like Zoom or Teams, etc. Lastly, export to Office. It might be required for compliance, or you simply decide to pursue this option to be economical with your floating licenses. The letter R with a relational symbol means that the test case is a downstream reference from system requirements, as we know now. All work item IDs are clickable links that take you back into CodeBeamer so you can review all about the chosen ones, provided you have the required access rights. To experiment with full traceability from customer requirement to task and source code, I'm going to remove the test cases and add tasks instead. Task number seven has source code. I know because I added it right before the session. To display it in a new column, I'll go ahead and add one. I'm using the filter cone icon to change the column type. Tracker type, change set, SCM commits. Then I hit go and enjoy the full traceability from top requirement to lower requirement, task, and finally the source code committed. The system requirements downstream from total weight must be 1,100 kilograms or less, have suspected link propagation active. This is why you can see a gray tag on the system requirement. In an ideal world, customer requirements get accepted and set in stone before your engineers start working on system requirements, and customers never change their minds. In this case, suspected links will never fire up and there's nothing to do about them. In the real world, this is seldom the case. Often, there's a change in the upstream item that may impact downstream ones, and so a suspected link will become red to highlight the unusual event that may require your attention. To pinpoint these critical ones, I can add a new filter. Has suspected link true. I can expand the selection by hitting the end or logic button. Notice one is the reference for has suspected link. Two is a reference for submitted by me. In the field provided, I'll put in one or two. I could go more complex, but this is enough to illustrate the point. Now I see all items with a suspected link plus all items submitted by me. If they meet both criteria, that's even better. Time may also become a filter. You can display traceability information as per a certain date in the past or at a baseline. Baselines are essentially snapshots you take at critical milestones of projects, like the start of phases or sprints. I just happen to have created one called before, right before the start of this training. Notice how right now we have records created today. I changed both customer and system requirements to show the situation captured in the baseline. This is extremely useful for audits, as auditors are not just interested in the fact that you have a successful test now. They're also interested whether or not you had had them before you chose to go live with your product. So you need to revert the clock to the time of go live and show them a traceability as of that moment. As I apply the filters, today's records are immediately gone. I'm heading over to the weight transfer system requirement only to add an association to a task. The type should be depends on, and then I link it to task eight in the same project. I also make sure to check the box propagate unresolved item dependencies. I head back to the traceability browser and there it is. A red label letting me know that the work item this current one depends on is not ready. 
it's not yet in a completed status. These are also exceptions you may want to filter for. To resolve the UID, I must go to the task and change the status to completed. Rerun the traceability and it comes back empty. Okay, this is it for our in-focus webinar session dedicated to the traceability browser. I hope you liked it. If so, please hit the like button and then join the Intlan Academy Hub closed group on LinkedIn, where this and all future sessions will be made available. Feel free to check out the webinar schedule online on Intlan's website and let your colleagues know about it. Finally, if you've been enjoying CodeBeamer, please create a review on G2 Crowd and help us spread the word. All of these links are available in the description below. That's it from me, Greg Parkhani from Intlan Academy. See you next week.